Welcome to our second video in the WinLink digital communication series. In this particular video, we're going to look at the settings for the Kenwood TS2000 radio, and we're also going to look at where to go to acquire the software that you're going to be using. So let's get started. On the Kenwood radio, there are, uh, is a menu system, and there are two menus, a menu A and a menu B. They're identical in items, but you can make different choices. Uh, well, I suggest that you set menu A up for voice and menu B up for digital. Uh, that way we can flip over to digital and uh, on the menu B and know that everything's uh, preset the way we need it for that kind of communication. So let's go through the items that are specific to that. Uh, so let's start off with item number 20. That's the RX equalization. We want to set that to off. Uh, item number 21 is the transmit equalization and we want that off. Item number 22 is the transmit band pass. Set that to 2.4. Item number 24 is the transmit timeout. And just set that to 20, 30 minutes, either one's fine. Next item is item 46. That's the internal TNC. We want that to reside on the sub radio, so set that to sub. The next series of items, the 50 series, A, B, C, D, E, and F, are all part of the packet series in the radio. Uh, 50A is the packet filter. Let's have that off. Uh, item 50B, C, and D, set all of these to 1. That's the lower setting. The range that you'll see for all of them is 1 to 3. Uh, but let's start off with 1, and then you can make adjustments as you need to uh, to increase those levels as you need to. Uh, 50B is the radio input audio level from the TNC. This is your transmit audio level on the radio. And 50C is the radio output going back to the TNC. So those are the two main ones that you'll look at. 50E is the external TNC and we want that on main because that will be on the main radio. Uh, item number 50F is the external TNC data transfer speed. Set that to 1200. Item number 55 is packet operation. Set that to off. Uh, this is for the internal TNC that's built into the Kenwood radio. If you're going to use the internal TNC instead of an external one, you turn this on and this will activate the internal TNC. We're not going to be using it, so let's leave it off. Uh, the last item is 56. This is the COM port speed on the back of the radio and set that to 9600. You're going to be seeing that number a lot in future videos. So those are all the menu settings that you need to set for digital. Let's come up and look at the front of the radio and uh, some of the things we need to talk about there. So the settings for the front of the radio that are very common uh, is to set the power level for VHF packet to about 25 watts. The range is actually 5 to about 50, uh, but as a starting point, use 25 watts, and that's the actual power setting that you're going to use on the radio. Now HF's a little different. We're going to set the power for HF in any of the modes to 60 watts on the radio. But then we're actually going to run the radio and adjust the power that's indicated on the meter up between 30 to 50 watts depending on our need with no ALC indicated. We do not want to have any kind of ALC indicated. Um, so again, we're going to set in HF modes, this would be uh, Pactor or Winmore. Um, we're going to set the radio to 60 watts, but we're actually going to only indicate 30 to 50 watts. And we'll show you how to do that later. The next item is the automatic gain control uh, speed on the unit. Uh, keypad 8 on the Kenwood, if you'll punch that, brings up that adjustment. Uh, just rotate the multi-knob all the way to the right. Set that to the fast position. We want that to react quickly. Uh, the next item is uh, to turn off all noise reduction, notch filters, and any other items that modify the transmitter receive audio. Uh, so again, uh, turn off the noise reduction and uh, the automatic notch filter, anything else on the front of the radio. Matter of fact, if you look at the display on the Kenwood, uh, you'll see the frequency, uh, you'll see the push to talk and control and the automatic gain level indicator, uh, but you're not going to see much else on the front of the radio. Most of the other icons and stuff should be disappear. Uh, and it should be running pretty cleanly. So you can look at the front of the radio and have a good visual of that pretty much everything's been turned off.
The last item we want to talk about is to always tune your antenna for the frequency you're using. Uh, on the Kenwood, this is very simple. We've covered it in a previous video in our training series on the 2000, is to hold down the AT key. Uh, until the auto tuner is engaged and then release it and it will tune the antenna right up. Uh, so again, always tune your antenna uh, for each frequency you are using and that way you know you're going to get the best throughput possible. Uh, so that completes looking at all of our settings uh, for uh, the radio and the next thing we're going to look at is going and acquiring software. So let's get to it. If you go to the WinLink website, that can be found at winlink.org, this is the page that will come up. The part that we're interested in is client software, so click on client software. This page shows all of the various softwares that can work in the WinLink system. There's Outpost, Airmail, versions of PackLink, and RMS Express. RMS, RMS Express is the one that we're interested in getting. If you'll scroll down to the bottom of this page, a thing I want you to notice is the WinLink FTP site. Again, that's the WinLink FTP download site. So just click on that. That will take you to the download site. And there are several different directories. The, directories. the one that we're interested in looking at is User Programs. So click on that. There's only two programs that we want to get that are on this list. The first one is the ITSH FBC program. Uh, this is the propagation program from the government. So let's click on that and we're going to save that program. The other one we're interested in looking at and getting is RMS Express install and you notice it has the 1.2.32 that's the current version that's listed here so we'll click on that and we'll save that one too okay so now that we've got those uh, we can go and look at those two that we have uh, so now that we've got those uh, let's go and install them Okay, you can see we're looking at the Downloads folder on Windows Explorer, and you can see that both of my downloads have been completed. The first one we want to look at is the ITS HFBC, and we need to extract both of these since they're in zip form. So you just right-click on that, come down to Extract All, it's going to ask you where you want to put it. You can just put it in the same folder if you want to, or out to your desktop, anywhere is fine, and hit Extract. Uh, you can see it takes it doesn't take long there's the folder um, we're going to do the same thing for RMS Express we'll just right click on that and extract all and let it put it in the same one hit extract again and it will uh, extract out all the files in RMS Express okay so now we have both of our folders uh, extracted first one we want to look at is, again is the ITS HFBC so open that folder and there's your executable file to download your software so just double click on that and let it download uh, I'm not going to do it since it's already on my system uh, but just use all the default settings it will put it out to your C drive and that's where you want it um, and it'll also put a uh, icon on your desktop uh, the other one you want to look at is the RMS Express. Uh, again, you can open that folder, and there's the uh, file for it, and just run it the same way. So go, we'll go ahead and do those two, and then we'll come back and look at uh, what they look like. Okay, so now we're looking at my C drive, and on my C drive is the ITSH FBC folder and you'll also see that there's an RMS Express folder. So let's look at uh, the IT SH FBC folder first. Let's open that. There's nothing in here that you need to access but I did want to look at the readme file real quick to show you something. Uh, this gives you uh, all of the information about uh, the program that it's a government program uh, created by the NTIA 
IST. And uh, if you go down to the bottom, you can kind of finally figure out what the those let lettering is all about. Uh, this is the National Telecommunications and Information Administrations, and the ITS stands for Institute for Telecommunication Services. Uh, this is the HF Planning Program, and they're located in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, so that's where that ICOM comes from, the uh, ITS HFBC. So in just in case you wanted to know that, it, it bugged me for a long time, and I think that's where they got the lettering from it. Okay, well, there's nothing that you need to do. Uh, you will this this uh, folder just resides on your C drive, and you will not be uh, accessing it or starting anything from it. Uh, RMS Express just needs it there to access. So let's go to the RMS Express folder and open that. And uh, we'll scroll down uh, to where you can see the icons. Uh, there's two that we're interested in, RMS Link Test and RMS Express. RMS Link Test is a good program to start uh, when you first put this on your computer uh, to see if your computer and router and modem for your local internet is set up to where it can go out and talk to the CMS servers. And it's just basically a test program. So you can run it directly from here. So just double click on that and it will open up the program and uh, you can see it here as it runs through. Uh, basically what it's doing uh, is looking at uh, all of the uh, CMS servers that are available. So it's got Halifax, San Diego, Perth, Wayne, and Brentwood. These are all the ones it will normally communicate to. And it just sends out a test ping uh, to each of those locations. And what you want to see is this. You want to see it uh, with a response time. Uh, and you can see that it is actually communicating with each of these locations. Uh, if it had not been able to do that, uh, then you've got an issue with uh, the uh, probably your firewall or the routing ports that are on your router uh, at your system. And uh, dealing with that is beyond the scope of this program. Uh, but this is a good test to see if uh, RMS Express is going to be able to communicate uh, from your particular computer uh, out onto the internet. So run this test and if you get these responses you're good and if not at least it will tell you that you need to uh, look at opening some ports up and uh, getting uh, the communications uh, set. So let's close that. Uh, the last thing we need to do is come up to the RMS Express program uh, executable file and we need to put this on your desktop. Uh, RMS Express doesn't automatically do this. Uh, so just right click on this, uh, come down to send to and then come over uh, to uh, desktop, create a shortcut and that's all you need to do. Uh, so that's the software for RMS. That's how to go get it and bring it down uh, and the two programs that you need to have. Uh, so uh, once that's set up in your computer, you should be good to go. Uh, so that's it. Uh, hope uh, to see you in a future program. We'll start out uh, training on the RMS Express software in the next one. Uh, until then, this is K4REF.